for coming to the Clearwater Marine Aquarium today. We really appreciate you visiting because without you walking through the doors, they wouldn't be able to continue doing the awesome work that they do. So thank you so much for spending your Sunday here. My name is Jenna. My family has been taking care of birds at our facility for the past 40 years. And because birds live so long, I'm the second generation keeper of those birds. I've been doing behavior work and free flight for the past three years, and that's kind of how we ended up here today. Um, the three of us will likely mention free flight during the show, which means that we have birds that we fly unrestrained outdoors. And that being said, I don't want you to think that just because we do that, that if you have a pet bird at home, you can just go fly outside. <laughs> because it takes a long time to learn animal behavior, and it took us a long time to establish the bond with our animals. So if you're interested in learning about that, please feel free to come talk to us and ask us any questions you have about that after the show. There are flight and birds in this show. They're gonna fly around you and near you and maybe even over your head. Do not reach up and try to grab any birds. Also, uh, don't lift your arms up and try to encourage birds to land on you. Please keep your arms down and enjoy the show. And if a bird happens to land on you, try not to freak out <laughs> and also, don't put your hands in their faces. Just wait for us to come grab them and we'll be there as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna go grab one of those birds right now and they are gonna introduce themselves. All right, so if we could just practice snapping, please. The birds, you get a little startled when we clap. So when the birds do something good, go ahead and snap for us. My name is Felicia Hazelton. I've been working in professional avion care for four years now. Me and my significant other have a flock of four blue and gold macaws. We've traveled all over the United States, free flying those birds in 25 different states and educating the public about free flight. Hi, my name is Kayla Oaks. I've been working with birds for about six and a half years and free flying for free. I've worked with birds as small as little cockatoos all the way up to big bald eagles everywhere from Florida to Alaska. And without further ado, I am very excited to introduce our first feathered friend, and here she comes. All right, Miss Lexi here is a maroon belly conure, and conures come from South America. There are about 45 species of conures, and she is part of the smaller conures. <laughs> She's been a little full of herself today, so let's just keep that in mind. She's pretty. I am pretty. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, you can call me Becky. So, so, they come from the bird they come from the south of Brazil and north of Argentina, and they live for about 35 years. She's just under a year old, so hopefully, her and I think we'll be friends for a very long time. Okay. <laughs>
Ladies at home, these guys are sisters. Hi, Hopi. Come over here. See if they'll do some spins for you. Can you spin? Can you spin? Good girls. Good job. So these guys will live around 60 to 80 years in professional care. They live around 35 to 40 in the wild. I'm sure you guys are asking how we tell them apart. Well, they do have these black lines on their face. This is how we tell them apart at our home because we do have four of them. So Clea here has a little bit thicker lines on her face than her sister. Her sister has a little bit more thinner lines. They're a little bit more smaller and just more, um, what would you say, Opie? Huh? Not as messy as your sisters? <laughs> right. Huh? Good job. Good job, girls. Can you go back? Can you go back? Here, I'll step up right here. Good job. Can you guys wave? Can you wave? Wave. Good job. Good. Make a move. So we teach these behaviors because in the wild they do fly multiple miles a day to find food. So that's very enriching for them. Um, and without that too, they are also being chased by predators um, and finding their friends. So in professional care we want to make sure that we're keeping their minds active and stimulated. So with that being said, let's see. I hope you will be LeBron James here. Shoot some hoops. Hope you want to play? Come on. Good job. Hey, be nice to your sister. Can you shoot it in a shoot it in a hoop? Not you. Good girl. Good job. Alright, Leah. Leah wants to play a game. Leah doesn't know how to play hoops, so we'll play some rings. Alright, Leah. Ready? Be done. Good job. Hoopy's turn. Hoopy's turn. Good job, Leah. Oh, Hoopy's gonna steal it. Here, you wanna do it again? Play again? Got it. Oh, that's okay. Let's try that one. You almost got it. You almost got it. Oh, you're right there. Am I happy? Oh, good girl. Good job. So these guys do also do a vegetable rich diet, like Jenna was talking about with Miss Lexi. Come on. Good girl. We do make a chat for them, which is about four hours that we make it um, because it has a lot of lentils, it has a lot of grains in it that we have to cook, um, beans as well for protein. We do not feed them nuts in their daily diet. The reason why is because they are high in fat. Um, we don't want them to get obese, right? So we want to make sure that they're getting the right nutrition in the chop that we make. Hope you're going to have fun with that. Uh -huh. Let's see if they'll do a recall here. Wait there. So I'm going to show a quick cue here. Oh, she jumped the gun, that's okay. Good job, Hopi. Do you want to come? No, you just want to sit there and eat that? All right, that's okay. So these guys have flown all over the United States. We have taken them to the um, arches in Utah. They've flown through the arches. We've also taken them to Washington, D.C. They've flown right in front of the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument. So they have been all over the place. So quick cue here, I'm going to show her. Come. Awesome. So we do teach this with a clicker, so very similar to a dog. Um, you would teach a recall from a perch to you with a clicker. So once they come to you, you would click and then reward with a treat. So very similar. From there, you can phase that out and show the cue that I showed with my finger. Good job. Let's see if they'll do a, another recall back. I know Leah does. She loves treats. She's very cooked. So we also talk about when we feed food. So right now, I'm giving her a uh, pineapple which to them is about a dollar. So uh, if we want to give a little bit more of a reinforcer, we'll go up in a higher value. So I have a pistachio here, which for Kalia is probably about five bucks. Good girl. Hopi's positive reinforcer right now is this ring, which is fine. She's not really being food driven, but let's see if I show her this walnut. She'll drop that ring for me. You want this? Wow, she really likes that ring. All right, no problem. I'm gonna ask her with a step up. We never wanna force our birds to do anything. Everything they do is voluntary. If you don't wanna participate, that's totally fine. Can you step up? There it is, good girl. You can eat that on my shoulder. We'll let Leah finish her treat, and I'm gonna ask her for a step up. Hey, where are you going? You want that? Oh, no, I hope he's going to my clip. What about this? Oh, can you step up? Come on, you got it. Step up. All right, that's okay. Hey, go. Do you want it? Oh, I think she's scoping out her next victim to land on. I'm totally, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> so it's just like kids, they don't want to leave the playground. Sometimes you guys don't want to leave the playground, right? Yeah, so just like these guys, they 
sometimes don't want to leave either, which is fine. Leah, come on. All right, let's see what else I have in here that she might want. Oh, she's yawning. You want this? You want it? Come on. Come on. No. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask for another step up here. Let's see if I can give her a handful of pine nuts. Look at that. Can you step up? And there it is. Give it up for Hope and Kalina. All right, those are some beautiful flights from Hope and Kalia. For our next species, we are going to a different part of the world. We are going all the way down under to Australia. Everyone give it up for Gracie the Cockatoo. Say hi, Kayla. Hi, Kayla. No, say hi to Gracie. Oh, hi, Gracie. Everybody say hi, Gracie. Hi, Gracie. <laughs> all right, so what kind of cockatoo is Gracie? Gracie is a Moluccan cockatoo from the Molucca Island right off the coast of Indonesia. That's so interesting. Are there multiple species of cockatoo? There sure are, Kayla. So cockatoos come from this region of the world. Most species are found in Australia through the forested regions into Tasmania. However, many um, islands around Indonesia have their own special species of cockatoo like Miss Gracie here. Gracie is a six-year-old Malukan. Oh, it's okay. I'm not going to put him on you. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you look look at Gracie, you might notice that her beak doesn't quite line up. That's because when she was just four weeks old in the nest, her beak was injured and it separated into two separate pieces on the bottom. Now when cockatoos and all parents are babies, they have very soft beaks. They're very malleable. But actually their beaks are made of keratin, which is just like our fingernails. So they grow constantly. Um, so in the wild and in our homes, we give the birds lots of wood and things like that, and in the wild they're tearing through tree cavities and things like that, and that's actually keeping their beak maintained. So much like we have to file our fingernails, they have to do the same thing with their beak. But because Gracie can't do that, we give her a little spa day every eight weeks, and she does not know she's disabled at all. In fact, she has a very fulfilling life. She really loves her little grooming sessions, and and we keep her very healthy by flying her indoors. She's a little too clumsy to fly outdoors. That's why we call her Gracie, because she's not quite graceful. But we give her lots of vegetables. We give her um, little pieces of nuts that are broken up because she can't crack those nuts on her own. Um, and we also give her those pellets that are smaller and easier for her to, to enjoy. So Miss Gracie here is actually really good at eating her vegetables. We have a few cockatoos at our facility. And it's like living with perpetual four-year-olds forever. As you can imagine, this four-year-old mentality, it's really hard to convince them that vegetables are good for them. But Gracie has never given me a problem with that. She loves her greens and she really loves her broccoli. So kids be more like Gracie. All right, and it's not like your cockatoos were a bit wild. Is that true? It is true. In fact, Kayla, cockatoos have a reputation for being quite unpredictable. Now, um, Cockatoos actually have a bite force of 350 pounds per square inch. And they uh, are that's strong enough for them to bite through a broomstick. So they're very capable of tearing off the trim work in your house and destroying all kinds of things. So they're not that well suited for a home environment, especially if you live in an HOA or an apartment building, because the Malukan cockatoo is actually the loudest species of cockatoo. They've been known to scream as loud as a 747 jet engine. Oh. Yes. So, I bet you parents know what that sounds like. Probably like your house at bedtime or when you're trying to get those kids to eat vegetables, huh? Yeah. All right, everybody, give it up for Miss Gracie. All right. We're going to leave Australia. We're going to head on over to Africa. We're going to go to the central part of Africa near Cameroon. We're going to bring out a Congo African gray named Piper. I'm sure you guys have seen these guys all over social media. They talk a lot. They know a lot of behaviors as well, which they're going to demonstrate those for you today. Did you guys hear her give me a kiss just now? It was on my microphone. That's what that kissing noise was. She gives good kisses. Can you do it again? Yeah. <laughs> so, Miss Piper is a three-year-old African gray. And at home, we have actually several Congo African grays. So her and her African gray friends have learned how to mimic all the wild songbirds that visit our yard. They also know how to mimic a flock of crows. So they do 
birds to think that there's something else there than a big flock of tasty birds. So, Miss Piper here is really good at memorizing all kinds of sounds, but she's very shy in front of the audience. In fact, at home, she's memorized basically any digital noise she's ever heard. Um, she makes me think sometimes that I'm getting a text or a snap and it's just her. So, Miss Piper here, um, we're able to demonstrate in a different way how good her memory is because she is just a little shy in front of the audience. Um, we've been identifying colors. So we have a yellow, a purple, a green, and a blue ring here. And I will pick the first color that I hear. Purple. Purple, I heard purple. Can you get the purple for me? Good job. All right, let's give her a little reinforcement for that. I got a really good one for you. It's worth the wait, I promise. Here you go. Do you like this? She's thinking about it. So lately I've been giving her walnuts and since this is the fifth week of shows, she's decided she's sick of walnuts now. So I've been trying other things and the pine nuts work. I'm very lucky. Um, okay, so let's do a different color. All right, can you get the blue one for me, please? Good job. All right. Give it up for Miss Piper. She's so smart. All right. Quick, quick fun fact about birds. They do molt out their feathers yearly. These are some secondary feathers from our birds. And when I speak about secondary feathers, they are the feathers that are closest to their body on their wing. Those are the feathers that help them slow down when they're descending. Who wants to feather? All right, so for our next bird that we're going to bring out, it's going to be a hyacinth macaw. Hyacinth macaws are the largest reef lion parrot in the world, and they have quite a but, uh, big strength on them as well, which they're going to show you that today. All right, everybody, this is Ozzy. He is a one-year-old hyacinth macaw. And as we said, the hyacinth macaw is in fact the largest species of flying parrot in the entire world. And with this large size, it also comes a very big beak, as you can see. Now this beak right here has a whopping bite force, about 1,200 pounds of force per square inch. That is a massive amount of force. And because of that, they are one of the only species of parrot that's able to successfully crack over the macadamia nut. The hardest nut in the world to crack, but it's no issue for little Ozzy here. Now before I ask, uh, give him this tasty reward, I am going to ask him to do a quick behavior. Hey, Ozzy, can you spin for me? All right. Ooh. Oh, you didn't yell at me. Let's try it one more time. Can you spin? Oh, he's distracted. He's been wanting to play all the other shows. <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll ask him one more time. Hey, Ozzy. <laughs> he's just like the stand. I think it's the stand. Yeah. Here, can you spin? <laughs> so actually when we were initially training Ozzy, we always joked about how to start picking up. Uh, Alright, we'll just do a quick recall. Good job, buddy. And here's your reward. And I think his older brother's here today as well. You want to go to the perch for me? No, you want to go to the floor. Just like I planned it. Yep. <laughs> so Freddie here definitely has a mind of his own and he was supposed to crack this magna on stage for you guys. No, sir. Send it back this way. Come on. Ready? Come on. Let's go. Enjoy. So, <laughs> he already cracked the magnet before he even got on the stage. So, if you guys want to see, there you go. You can pass that around. It's down there. I'm not sure. Come on, Freddie. All right. Yeah, this bird is this one right here. here. This is a magnet shell. You can keep it or throw it away, whatever. But that's, that's very easy for them to crack open. With that bite force of 1,200 pounds per square inch, they're four times as strong as the cockatoo and twice as strong as the blue gold. So not only are they the largest flying parrot in the world, they are also the strongest. He's still working on his. Did you find another magnet, or are you still using the one that you have? Is that good? So sometimes he turns his part into a little bit, a little dance party. We're not sure if he's going to do it or not, but let's see if we can get him to hop. Can you hop around for us? What about my scrunchie? He loves playing with scrunchies. Can you get it? Guys, it's not the size he just wants to dance for 
than Ozzy does at this. Um, that's why it's so easy for him to crack those open. You want that? No? We're very lucky that we get to work with this species. There are only 5,000 left in the wild. And they actually don't have that many natural predators. Their numbers are so low because of uh, pet poaching for the pet trade and also because of habitat destruction. So actually in the wild, humans are their worst predator. And that's probably why they are so easy to work with because they're not fearful. There's not a lot of things that they're afraid of because they are such strong animals that um, there's not really a lot of things that can kill them. <laughs> All right. All right, are you ready? You're done with that? Okay, come on. You ready? Let's go. Come on, Freddy. Go. Come on, Freddy. Let's go. Come on, Freddy. Go, 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 Freddy.
love with the big blue ocean. And he got so excited when he learned that we were coming to work at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. And today, he decided to partner up with them to raise money for their marine research fund. Kayla and Brian have been working on a really fun behavior. Thank you. 